Okay, perfect. Welcome, everyone. Um, this is a um, last minute impromptu session that uh, we've uh, decided to uh, prepare for our Lebanese um, clients or just uh, Lebanese nationals in general and their family members who are interested in applying for a TRV, a temporary residence visa, and um, having the opportunity to, to come to Canada um, during this, this terrible circumstances. So um, if you're joining us from Canada, if you're joining us from Lebanon, um, welcome. Uh, we're gonna be covering the basics of a TRV uh, with more focus on what we can do to improve the outcome of that application. Uh, with family members in Canada. So we're going to be focusing on um, those who have um, close or um, more distant family members in Canada with focus on general TRVs and super visas. We're going to go through the document checklist. We're going to go through the requirements and we'll allow plenty of time on the end of the session for you to ask your questions, okay? So I'll get started with a quick introduction of who we are, uh, what we do, um, just so you get an idea of, of um, just who we are in general. Um, first of all, my name is Maria Garces. I'm an RCIC, Regulated Canadian Immigration Consultant, and I've been working with Incubate for five years now, I'm specializing in our consultations and legal departments with focus on economic immigration. So anything from study permits, work permits, uh, visitors to um, all the way uh, express entry and provincial nominee programs. And this is our principal consultant, Mr. Basil Sauder, also an RCIC, who has over 10 years of combined experience of US and Canada immigration. Um, and he's a founder of Incubate. Um, so he's um, quite experienced um, in the in immigration field in Canada, also specializing in economic-based immigration. Um, this is our team right here. Um, usually, I include this slide to um, show clients, you know, the different ways of immigrating to Canada, uh, regardless of their background. But I um, just wanted to um, throw this slide in here to show you who's behind our team and, and working on your applications. Um, and then we'll dive in into our process later. We do have three licenses in-house, uh, meaning that we can represent you all across Canada, both at provincial and federal levels, including Quebec. Um, just a note here, you do not need a representative to submit any application to Canada, okay? You can submit it completely on your own, through your own account, but if you're gonna seek the advice and the help of a representative of someone to assist you, make sure that they're licensed um, to do so, okay? Make sure that they're either consultants or lawyers in good standing of that uh, province. We have four offices, our biggest one being in Toronto, although we help our clients, you know, 99% of the cases online. Um, luckily nowadays, most of applications to Canada are now digitally without the need of having to send um, actual signed forms and documents. So this facilitates the process of helping everyone from everywhere at any time. And um, lastly, to close this um, introduction, um, we, like I said, um, our team um, is an experienced team of both in, uh, consultants, case workers, and just a team in general in the Canadian immigration field. Um, we do information sessions like this one almost on a monthly basis. And uh, these are free at no cost to listeners where we provide you the chance to ask questions. And um, our goal is to provide accurate information into um, what are the trends for Canadian immigration. Um, in this case, you know, documents and requirements for um, a specific type of application like the TRV. Um, and we work with all sort of organizations, including employers in Canada, including institutions for international students um, to skilled workers outside of Canada. So um, we are quite specialized in that field, in economic uh, field, like I mentioned. Um, and yeah, we're happy to be here today and help you in any way that we can in this um, circumstances. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. Lastly, we do um, offer our services in different languages, including English, French, Spanish, Portuguese, and Arabic. So um, although the, the language of preference for our team is English, if you do feel more comfortable or uh, not so comfortable speaking 
um, in, in English, um, you can reach out in any of these languages, okay? All right, let's dive in and let's start uh, with a uh, definition of what a TRB is and some of the key points of this type of application. So, um, and sorry, before I dive into this, just um, again, just wanna reinforce that we're gonna focus on applicants for those who have family members in Canada um, and how to prepare an application that's considered strong um, with, with a higher chance of a favorable outcome. Um, so a TRB, a temporary resident visa, um, it is a visitor visa that allows you to enter Canada for up to six months consecutively as a visitor. Um, it may be issued for up to 10 years or the duration of your passport, uh, but not over that. Okay. Uh, what we want to highlight in today's session is the expedited or the fast processing that it's being considered for those um, who are in Lebanon and who have family members, immediate family members mainly um, in Canada and uh, want to come to Canada to reunite uh, with their family temporarily. Okay, let's not forget that this is a temporary residency um, application, so uh, it will still be reviewed on temporary residence basis, basis uh, types of applications, so proving that um, it is for a short visit and will eventually return back. But uh, the focus here is on the immediate need to, to leave, visit our family members, and eventually uh, return. So we don't have to focus so much on those ties if this is something that we cannot produce right now, and we'll talk about that in a second, but more so on um, the purpose of visit and focusing on um, that family reunification with um, our Canadian family. Okay, um, when I say Canadian family, I mean both Canadian citizens and permanent residents. So it does not have to be just citizens, it can also be permanent residents in Canada. Um, this is a completely digital application, so it is online processed. Um, and the good thing about this is that there are no original documents required. I know a lot of clients are having issues accessing certain documents at the moment. So um, I thought this would be a, a highlight to mention here, uh, but we will still need copies of certain documents. Um, we'll mention them in a second, but you will not need an actual, um, an actual um, document uh, for the application. So it will all be uploaded into um, the IRCC account and processed digitally. Okay. Um, now, uh, the purpose, like I said, or the, the highlight here is to emphasize the, the purpose of visiting Canada, uh, which is strongly focused on visiting that family member, that either Canadian citizen or permanent resident. Um, so we'll prove this through certain letters of intent, letter of invitations, uh, proof of relationship to that family member. And we're going to review how to prove all this in the next few slides. Um, and yeah, like I said, it can be granted for up to 10 years or up to the validity of your passport. <clears throat> All right, so this is a very generic document checklist, um, something that's pretty standard for most TRV applications. Um, and um, there are certain documents that we're going to dive in in the next um, slides because they do this serve a slide on their own and further explanation. So uh, first of all, there's going to be forms. Generally speaking, will be a couple forms uh, that you will need to fill in with accurate and up-to-date information, and you will need to validate uh, or either print and sign. Um, the instructions are very clear on the form, and if not, you can always click on the question mark of that um, document to, to review the requirements. Uh, passport validity. You will even need a copy of the passport. This is of the passport bio page, um, bio page, sorry, and then um, as well as any other pages that we have stamps and visas on. Um, something very important is that the passport must be valid for at least six months. Um, otherwise, the application can be returned. And like I said, the more validity that we can present, the better, because then um, the longer the visa will be issued for. Okay, so just keep that in mind. If there's any passport renewals we have to make, um, let's let's try to focus on that first. We'll also need a digital photo with white background. Um, you can take this at a photo studio um, or even at home if it follows the requirements for, for digital photos. And again, the details um, are also included in that question mark of the document. When we enter into the online application, the document checklist will pop up a question mark where you can um, review further the requirements for that specific document. 
Um, next one, very important one, and the one probably that I get most questions on is the proof of funds. Um, like any other um, temporary residency application to Canada, we need to show that we have the sufficient funds um, to travel to Canada. These funds are designated to cover the expense of um, traveling, so flight tickets, as well as accommodation and any other expenses that we may incur during our stay in Canada. Um, we have a whole slide on this, so we're going to touch on this more further. Um, but just as a general heads up and note here, um, this will be one of the main differences that we will see between a regular TRV and a super visa, which is another topic in today's session. Um, next item is a letter of intent of purpose of visit. Here, we this is not a required document. This is more so a recommended document from our side, from experience. Um, the letter of intent should include an explanation, a personal explanation from your side as an applicant. Um, so if you're joining on behalf of a family member who's trying to apply, this specific letter is for the applicant themselves, okay? So uh, here we are explaining why we're visiting Canada. Again, the focus should be of a short visit. And here, highly recommend to highlight that relationship that we have with our family member in Canada, whether it's our sibling, whether it's our mom, dad, um, or even aunt or uncle. Um, just sort of explain that relationship and why uh, we're coming to visit them. It doesn't have to be too long. One page letter is more than enough. Uh, what we'll see is that the next item, which is actually the invitation letter from our Canadian family member, is probably um, waiting more in this type of application. In this invitation letter, item, item, item number six in this checklist, um, our Canadian citizen or permanent resident family member in Canada will uh, provide details of themselves, so um, confirmation of their passport number or um, driver license number, um, whatever and official ID they want to use, uh, full name and then relationship to you, confirming that they are inviting you to come to Canada. Um, if applicable, then provide as well details of the accommodation, etc. We're going to see what details to include in the next slide. Um, but this letter ideally should be notarized from the family member of, sorry, from a notary public in Canada, but um, the one that's written for by the family member, sorry. Uh, next item is proof of relationship. Um, it's very important that we provide documents showing the relationship to our family member in Canada. Uh, we'll see in the next few slides what documents are accepted for it, but um, this can either be included under what we call client documentation or under the invitation letter. Uh, just make sure because sometimes it will not pop up as a um, document on its own and we will have to include it with other documents in the list. Just make sure that this is included. This is probably one of the most important documents that shows that relationship um, to our family member in Canada. And lastly, other relevant documents that can support applications, such as employment documents, previous travels, uh, previous visas. We're going to dive into this um, in the next few slides. So <clears throat> let's start with proof of funds. Like I said, any temporary residency application will require us to prove certain funds. Uh, for temporary residency application, there is no minimum funds. So it's a little tricky to determine what's the right amount. Um, so as a benchmark, we advise to demonstrate at least 5,000 Canadian dollars uh, per single applicant. But I want you to think that the funds have to be consistent with your travel plans. Um, so what, whatever we're writing in that letter of intent or that uh, purpose of travel, if um, you know we're mentioning that we're coming to stay for three months, uh, then 5,000 may not be sufficient. Um, we have to take into consideration the cost for traveling, so flight, uh, planes, um, trains, if we have to take any upon landing in Canada. We have to also take into account accommodation. Um, so if this is that something that will be provided by our host or our family member, um, this has to be fully mentioned as well. So um, we have to make it reasonable. Um, so like I always said, for funds, the more the merrier. Now, um, the funds can be demonstrated in check-in savings or investments accounts, as long as the investment accounts um, fully discloses that the funds can be retrieved at any time. 
Uh, this can be in Lebanese bank accounts, in foreign currency bank accounts, USD, <clears throat> non-USD, et cetera. Um, and what's good about uh, this is that we can use sponsors if needed. So if you feel like the funds that you have to demonstrate as an applicant are not sufficient or um, will not be reasonable with our travel plans, highly recommend to count it with the help of a sponsor. This can be a close relative, and this can be also your host or your family member in Canada. So for that, that person will have to demonstrate this on their own. So they will have to provide a four month bank statement of a check-in savings or investment account where we show that their minimum funds are there. Um, and then on top of this, if they could also provide proof of employment, pay slips, um, any source of income that they have, this will be helpful as well to show that they are financially capable and stable to um, sponsor you during uh, your stay in Canada, okay? Uh, now, <clears throat> whether this is our sponsor, sorry, whether this sponsor is our host, so the person that is inviting us to come to Canada, or whether it's another family member perhaps residing in another country, we need to also prove um, relationship to this person, okay? So if it happens to be the host, um, and the person that we're visiting, the one that will financially sponsor us, then perfect. We already would have that proof of relationship because like we said, that was a mandatory document. But if it's someone else, we would need a new proof of relationship, uh, which we're going to show in the next slide, actually what we accept as, as proof. Um, and then it also should be accompanied by a letter of sponsorship. And in this letter, uh, this is something um, very basic, where the sponsor is um, confirming to uh, financially assist you and sponsor during your entire stay in Canada. Ideally, it should mention their full name, passport number, uh, available funds that they have for uh, you to borrow or for them to sponsor you, and um, the fact that they will be covering all costs during your travels. It has to be signed and dated recently and again accompanied by a photo ID. So this could be a copy of their passport, driver's license or PR card, okay? Um, so yeah, the, the four month bank statement, it's highly recommended. If not, at least the three month bank statement will be required. Um, and like I said, it can be in any currency. Just keep in mind that if you include a bank account in a different currency that's not Canadian dollars, uh, make sure to uh, include a print screen of the conversion rate um, and the total conversion funds into Canadian dollars. <clears throat> All right, now focusing on the host. So our family member who's here in Canada, um, like I said, a letter from them would be uh, needed in order to prepare a strong application. Um, Again, whether this is our brother, sister, mom, dad, um, nephew, or aunt or, or niece, uh, whatever type of relative we're focusing on here, um, the letter should include the basic details of the visit as well as themselves. So, hi, I am a Canadian citizen or a permanent resident of Canada, passport number, da 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 da, born on this state, in this country. Um, and I am inviting this person, full name, full passport numbers, so or your details, um, to come to Canada from this date to this date. So highly recommend to include a specific travel plan with travel dates. This can be as early as late October, early November. We're looking for quick, immediate action. So um, something in the closer future would be ideal. Um, and here, depending on the relationship, you know, should highlight certain things such as I have not seen my family member in this long and really looking forward to seeing them um, now or, you know, last time we saw each other was this time. Um, if they will perhaps will be providing accommodation as in if you will be staying at their house or their home, um, this should be mentioned in the invitation letter. So, I live in an apartment or a house that has X amount of bedrooms and we will have a dedicated space for our family member. Um, so this should be included as well because then we're removing the barrier of financial um, requirements for accommodation. Um, and then uh, very important as well, if they previously, if you as an applicant have previously come to visit them, make sure to mention this, mention the date, what was the purpose of the travel, what was the outcome, what did you do? 
Um, so just as many details as we can into that relationship to prove to the officer that there is not just the paper uh, work relationship, but also that close relationship. Um, we could even include photos from previous travels um, to show that, that uh, or to support that relationship even more. Uh, but yeah, these are some ideas that we can include. Um, financial support details, like I said, if this will be the person also sponsoring you financially, um, also should be included in here. Although I do recommend providing two letters, the invitation letter and the um, financial sponsorship letter, just to keep things separated. Um, but uh, the details should be reinforced in here as well. So just like we're going to mention that they will be providing accommodation. Also mentioned that um, they will be financially responsible and um, covering our costs during our stay in Canada. Uh, lastly, the letter could be notarized as well to add more weight into it. This is something that's required perhaps for super visa applications. Um, so for regular TRV applications, it is not a requirement, but it does add more authenticity to the, to the document, to what we're saying. So um, this is something that your family member in Canada could do, get it notarized. And then um, proof of relationship to the host. So uh, proving, like I said, this is a crucial document. We're here basically telling the officer, this is how I'm related to this person. So this could be through birth certificates or perhaps family extracts. So in the case that we are looking at, uh, for example, an aunt or an uncle, uh, we would have to provide um, so our own birth certificate as applicants, and then our parents' birth certificate, and then aunt or uncle's birth certificate. We need to link it all together and show how we are all related. Alternatively, we can also use family extracts, although I do push for birth certificates first, if not family extracts, and if both can be provided, both birth certificate and family extracts, that's totally fine. Um, quick note here, because I get this asked a lot, um, it's okay if they were issued years ago. Um, if you married after that family extract that's issued, that's totally fine. What we want to show here is that original document uh, proving that you were um, indeed um, son or daughter of, of your parents and they're listed there or siblings uh, with them. In the case of siblings, this is also uh, showed there as you may know. We will need to provide a copy of the original, meaning um, the, the Arabic document, as well as translations. So we need to provide a notarized translation of certified translation um, for any documents that are not originally issued in English or French, and the translations can be done to English or French, okay? It doesn't matter which one. All right, and then what to include in other documents. Um, here, it's up to you. There will be in the document checklist a section that says client information. And here, we're free to provide pretty much any documents that we want. So um, some of our recommendations, and again, this is based, um, is, this it highly depends on your personal circumstances. So uh, for some, it would be doable and reasonable to provide proof of employment. So a letter of employment, an employment verification letter that shows um, that you're employed for X amount of time um, in X exposition. Um, and then ideally as well, proof of compensation, proof of income through pay stubs, checks, or salary bank deposits. If you are paid in cash, which is very normal in Lebanon, um, you can provide um, uh, sort of a, a template or a letter from um, the company where um, they provide a breakdown of all the payments that they done to you per year, the total amount, um, any deductions if applicable, and uh, signed and stamped by uh, the, the company, accounting firm, or HR department uh, that will be providing such document. Um, if you're perhaps a student who's still completing university or college studies, uh, proof of pending studies would also be um, ideal. Again, um, the emphasis on this is that we will eventually return back home. We have pending things back to do. We're just focusing on a short-term uh, visit to Canada. So proof of pending studies could be, I still have a few semesters left on my program or a practicum or whatever um, that is uh, provide um, 
you know, the original uh, transcripts and if possible, a letter from the university. Um, here also will be very important to include previous visas and proof of travel, whether it was to Canada or any other countries. What we want to emphasize here is that you have previous travels, you have um, left um, Lebanon before, if applicable, and you respected your conditions as a temporary resident. So this should also be, as a document, it should be included as copy of the visas or the stamps in your passport, but it should also be demonstrated and included in your purpose letter, in your letter of intent, um, emphasizing um, the fact that you have traveled before and you will be respecting the conditions in Canada as well. So um, very, very important if you have it. Um, and then, yes, the purpose um, of travel letter, like I mentioned, your purpose uh, letter of intent. Um, in some checklists, there will not be a designated um, exhibit for this. So this is something that could go under other documents or client information. And if we have to prepare any letters of explanations, this is where they will go. Layers of explanation can be regarding situations, can be perhaps regarding previous refusals, can be regarding um, certain documents that we don't have available, um, etc. So um, this will be the, the spot of where to include them. Now, in top of this, if you have documents such as uh, police certificates uh, from countries that you lived before, um, or any other employment documents, uh, these will be where we in include them, okay? Post certificates are non-mandatory for temporary residence visas, uh, but it's something that if you have it, it's good to include it. All right, now let's quickly cover super visas. So super visas are a type of visitor visa, okay? Meaning that whoever, it's, it's still stamped, it's a TRV stamped on uh, a passport and still allows that person to come to Canada as a visitor. But the main difference here is that the person will be able to come for up to five years and stay to, in Canada for up to five years. Now, this is only available for parents and grandparents of Canadian citizens or permanent residents in Canada. So this is not available to everyone, only for those two type of relationships, parents and grandparents. Um, there are other requirements uh, for super visas, and the main difference, like I mentioned earlier, is the uh, minimum financial requirement. Here, we're not evaluating the principal applicant, we're evaluating the host. Okay, so in this case, it would be the, the son, daughter, or grandson, granddaughter, um, Canadian citizen, or permanent resident, inviting their parents or grandparents to come. Um, that person gets assessed against LICO. Um, so the low income cutoff, uh, we're gonna look at that table in the next slide. So you can see how much you would need to demonstrate if you're inviting them. So what this means is that the applicant on their own, so your parents or grandparents will not, not, will not need to demonstrate financials, okay? So um, this is something that uh, it's very positive if we want to avoid demonstrating or we are having challenges to demonstrate our funds back in Lebanon. Um, all right, um, another few um, differences here is that this type of application also requires proof of purchase of a Canadian health insurance. Um, so it has to be purchased for at least one year. Even if we're coming to visit for six months, we will need to provide purchase of health insurance from a Canadian um, health company or insurance company um, or um, international approved ones. Um, the details for these are in IRCC's Supervisa website, uh, but make sure that you include actually the receipt of purchase. The quote on its own, it's not um, sufficient, okay? So proof of having purchased insurance. We'll also need medical exams. So um, your parents or grandparents will also need to take a medical exam um, by a panel physician. This cannot be done by anyone. It has to be done by uh, someone who's authorized by IRCC. So if you go online to panel physicians, IRCC, um, there's actually two in Lebanon um, that they can book their exams with. Um, and this will be an upfront medical exam because we will need to provide it before we even get our request. Okay. And just like a regular visa, it can be granted for up to 10 years or the validity of the passport. So same recommendation, uh, please make sure that our passport, we can maximize that validity. 
All right. Now, this is the table for the minimum funds for those who um, are sponsoring or hosting their parents and grandparents. So um, we can see here the family size and then the difference minimum income that we need. So these are not the funds that we need to have in our bank account. These are the inc This is the minimum income that that person needs to make annually. Um, and this can be either per, um, per um, person, per host, or as a family. So we can sign, or we can bring what we call a co-signer. So our spouse, for example, and combine our incomes. Now we have to take into account the family unit. So um, if it's, for example, you and your spouse, then it's two people just of your family. And then we have to add whoever we're inviting from outside. So whether it's mom and dad, or just mom or just dad, add that as an additional person. Now, if in our household, we also have dependent children, so it's, for example, the four of us, then we also need, then we're parting from the four person mark here, plus any person, any parent or grandparent that we are inviting here, okay? Now, important, if any parent or grandparent have dependent children, uh, so up to the age of 21, or who are dependable in other ways from parent, from um, the parents, these uh, persons will also need to be taken into account, okay? And then um, if we reach more than seven, then any additional person will be about 8,000 additional dollars, again, income. Now, the way we have to prove this ideally would be through our most recent T4, so for right now it would be for 2023, and our notice of assessment those two documents. And then if on top of this, we can also provide an employment reference letter that confirms our annual salary along with the most recent paychecks. So the last three paychecks should be sufficient. Um, this is a deal scenario. If not, then it would be just the T4 and the NOA on its own or just the employment documents on, it, on its own. But the more that we can prove, the better. And again, if we are considering here perhaps to... Um, so a host and a co-signer. So let's say um, to, to people to invite um, their parents or grandparents, we need to consider um, both double these documents for each of these uh, people, okay? <clears throat> All right. Um, and then, well, for those of you who don't know the TRB, um, this is a very old um, version, but this is what it would look like on the... Uh, passport, just always keep in mind the validity um, and travel before it expires, of course. And let's see what else do we have here. Um, all right, before we dive in into the Q&A, the questions, um, just a quick reminder, if you have previous refusals, um, let's try to not file right away. Um, I know we're in urgent um, circumstances and we need to apply as soon as possible, but um always check if you have more documents to overcome what was um, previously highlighted by the officer so if we were refused because of proof of funds let's try to improve that um and if you had the chance perhaps to get an atip uh request which is an access to information privacy act um, this would have given you access to the notes of the previous application. This is very valuable because it will tell you what the officer, what the actual reason of refusal was uh, by the officer with full comments. So if you had that perfect, if not, uh, full disclosure, it takes anything from four to five weeks nowadays to get an ATIP request. So I know it's not within our timeline. So um, if it, we have a previous refusal and we haven't gotten an ATIP, don't worry about it, just try to really improve what was um, pointed out by the officer on that refusal letter, okay? All right, so uh, that concludes the presentation. Um, that gives us about 20 minutes now for questions. So uh, what I recommend, I don't know if you, okay, there's some questions here already. Um, I'll prioritize those that are on the chat. Um, and then if you prefer to um, unmute yourselves, just, I don't know if you have the option to raise your hand. If you don't, um, just try to mute yourself and we'll try to organize it. It's not a lot of us today, so I think we can make it work. So, but first let me start with um, the question from Manar here. 
Um, okay, do you help people outside Canada to secure jobs in Canada? Unfortunately not. Uh, we're not a recruitment agency. We don't have the license to do so. We can only focus on the immigration part of things. So definitely can focus or definitely can assist you with uh, the work permit application um, or the LMIA and um, or online job offer that's required for the work permit, but not in the recruitment part or not in the placement of um, jobs in Canada, unfortunately. Um, all right. And now if you want to ask more questions, I'll give a few minutes so you can type them on the chat. Um, or if not, like I said, you can raise your hand and um, if you have the option, if not, try to meet yourselves and we'll, we'll go about that. Okay. Another question here, if we get this visa type, could we convert it to work visa? Great question. So this was allowed up until last month. Um, but unfortunately, um, the minister changed this on the day of, um, as in they didn't give us any warning. And uh, what happened is that visitors in Canada can no longer apply for um, work permits, only certain and very specific situations. So perhaps if we are the spouse of an international worker or a qualified international student, but again, our spouse needs to be either working or studying in Canada, we could then apply for such, but if we are just arriving as a visitor, don't have um any family member who who qualifies uh for that, we we unfortunately cannot change to work permit. However, you can remain in Canada and then we can send an application for a work permit to be processed back in Lebanon. Um, this is completely normal, but what will happen is that you will need to um leave and re-enter Canada to activate that work permit. That's the main difference. Okay. Uh, 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 all right. Great question here. Um, and sorry, just to address Wissam's um, question here. So no, there are no special programs at the moment for um, Lebanese nationals, unfortunately. Um, I don't discard that there will be, but I also don't want to speculate right now. There has been previous public policies and programs for other countries such as um, Ukraine, perhaps, but right now there are no uh, measures for Lebanese. Trust me that when, when and if this happens, um, we will have a full session on this because uh, we know it's of big interest for many. But as of right now, they've just, uh, released um, news on the past processing for family members, nothing on, on other uh, measures, unfortunately. Okay, then let's go back to this question here. Can international students apply for TRV or super visa family members? Yes, they can. So um, now the requirements will be a bit different because, um, and sorry, just to clarify, they can apply for TRVs, but not super visa. Okay, super visa is only for those who are Canadian citizens or permanent residents, but TRVs, family members uh, for international students or workers in Canada can definitely apply for it. So um, similar to what we discussed, we will need an invitation letter. In this case, we'll, instead of proving their um, Canadian citizenship or permanent residency, they will prove a copy of their study or work permit and proof of enrollment for students, okay? So this will be through partial transcripts and an LOE, a letter of, a letter of enrollment from the institution, confirming that they are attending classes. The invitation letter, same details, same um information and why they're inviting you and then we will also need the proof of relationship um now this may not be as prioritized as other applications because the government truly focuses on canadian citizens and permanent residency but um it still gives you a good motive to visit canada so if that's your case i would strongly recommend to apply for it Okay, we have another question here. Um, do you help in applications? Yes, we can absolutely help you and represent you in this type of applications. Uh, we are offering um, significant dis discounts for um, Lebanese nationals um, right now, like we've done in previous um, times before. Uh, what I will do is I will leave my colleague Gustavo and our solutions team um, details uh, we will provide you with a service quote at no um, compromise as in we'll 
um, tell you the our fees and our process overview, and uh, you're not committed to do it with us, just just so you know. Um, so I'll leave those details once we finish the Q&A session um, and you can email or WhatsApp our team and they'll provide you with a fees breakdown. Just um, make sure to mention that um, you are a Lebanese national or a family member of a Lebanese national and that you attended to this webinar so that uh, we can give you the right prices, okay? Um, all right, and then who qualifies as immediate family? So immediate family is described as spouse, um, children, siblings, or mom and dad, okay? So that's pretty much the three, just up, down, and side. No uncles, no nieces. Uh, but if we have family in the form of uncle and nieces, still strongly uh, recommend to apply because they're still considered family members. It's just that IRCC will prioritize immediate family members. So spouse, children, um, siblings, and mom and dad. Um, or grandparents, sorry. Um, another thing to mention, to keep in mind is that um, it also counts uh, perhaps your sister-in-law or your brother-in-law, if they are the ones who are citizen, that also counts as an immediate family member, okay? Um, okay, and then do you have an idea of how long the visa application process could take? Um, Okay, so I'm seeing applications processed in as quick as one week and others taking up to 30 days. Uh, that's within the immediate family um, description. So I'm seeing some very quick ones, other more on the regular times, um, although regular times on the website are right now about three to four uh, months. Uh, but again, the expedited time, anything from one to four weeks from what I've seen so far, this can change at any time. So I'm just giving you um, our feedback as of today, October 8th. Um, but like I said, ISCC is focusing on prioritizing those. Um, and then, yes, and you know what? I'm going to leave our contact details here in the meantime. Um, so that's our WhatsApp and that's our email, connect at incubate.ca. Okay, like I said, please make sure you mention you attended the session today and sisters and their family are included, absolutely. So for example, if we are applying, let's say our sister is in Canada and um, or our sibling is in Canada who's a Canadian citizen or a permanent resident and I am an adult applying on my behalf and on my kid's behalf, that all counts as a one application and they all count as immediate family members because you as a sister are the principal applicant, okay? So you can definitely include your children um, up to the age of 18. Okay, more questions. Um, as we get more news on new measures or uh, processes or whatnot, we'll do more sessions. Uh, we know is, um, you know, they're very uncertain times and things move quick. Um, so we're going to try to move as quick as we can as well. Um, so I appreciate everyone joining today. Um, once again, we're really sorry to hear everything that's happening and uh, please contact us. We'll be happy to tell you how we could assist you on what services we can support you. Um, also provide you with our discounted prices. Uh, but again, no obligation, no commitment here. What we're trying to provide you is with an educated way to apply for uh, this type of application and take advantage of the current expedited times. Um, and outside Lebanon, they have the right to apply. Yes, they do, although it might not be processed as quick. So um, just a note here, this is a really good question actually. Um, <clears throat> if you are applying from let's say Saudi or um, any other country, um, you can um, request the processing to be done at the Lebanese embassy. Um, at that point, I would recommend checking processing times between the country where you're located and Lebanon and see which one's faster. Um, but if you, you are applying from another country and you are from Lebanon, as in you're a Lebanese national, you can request in the form processing uh, from Lebanon at the Canadian embassy. Okay.
Of course, thank you for the good questions. Okay, another one here. Is there another visa type, maybe student visa for children under 19, for example, to register in children's schools in Canada? So um, this is not something that's available at the moment. Um, unfortunately, as in, in order for our kids to join school here, they would have to, um, and again, join a public school with no international fees. Um, so as domestic students, they would have to be dependents of workers or study permit holders in Canada at the moment. Um, coming as visitors, they can join school, but they would have to pay uh, international student fees. So right now there's no um, measure or public policy for Lebanese nationals. Like I said, if this becomes available, we'll make sure to have another session on this and um, provide you with all details. So make sure to follow us wherever you're following um, because we will be posting it there. But right now there's no visa type for my children um, who are not accompanying either a work permit holder or a study permit holder. Okay. No, so um, <clears throat> private and public schools. So if um, a minor child is coming to study in Canada at an elementary or secondary level as a mandatory school, um, they're at a school age, um, they will have to pay international student fees if they don't qualify for domestic fees. And what qualifies them for domestic fees as minor children is either their mom or dad or one of their parents has to have a work permit or a study permit. So if we're in a situation where, um, you know, the whole family is coming as visitors, that does not qualify uh, for the minor children to be accepted into a uh, public school as a domestic student, and they will have to pay international student fees. Okay, Quebec works a bit differently, um, and there may be certain cases there, but I don't want to go too much in detail because it's up to the school district, and um, we've had some um, troubling cases in the past, so um, as a general rule, I'm going to say that, um, which is mom and dad would either need a work permit or a study permit. Okay. Um, and thank you. Thank you all for joining. Um, like I said, we'll keep you posted with any more updates. Um, feel free to contact us. Uh, we're really trying to work our way to, to provide you with as much support as we can. Um, so thank you for your time. Thank you for joining. I truly hope the situation um, improves. And uh, yeah, we're available for um, anything that we can help you. Our solutions team will be happy to um, to respond, okay? So thank you all for joining. Um, those recording will be available if you wanna review any of the documents that we discussed. Um, I believe we'll be posting it to our YouTube channel as well, but if not, um, please contact our team and we'll send you the link um, so you can access everything that we discussed. So thank you, everyone. I wish you a great rest of your day and week, and um, we hope to help you very soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Manon. Bye.